Hello. Um, end of January. This is the uh, time that this video is being released for. January the 31st. Um, how are we all feeling? Um, truth be told, I probably feel a little delirious. Um, I've lost all routine and control and I'm somewhat giddy with anticipation of the next curveball. Um, this week we had a period of period of self-isolation uh, whilst John was waiting for a Covid test and uh, then managing the resulting homeschooling and both of us with kind of two full-time jobs. Um, pleased to say the test came back negative um, and, we're, and we're starting to claw back normalcy. Um, I'm at once proud of our effort uh, and also I'm very mindful of all the families who are permanently having to homeschool during this phase of school closures. And so it is uh, within this context that I speak today about Jesus' faithfulness uh, and what a time it is to be a believer. We've been uh, given two passages of text this morning. Um, the first from Matthew, an excerpt of Jesus sends out the twelve, and the second from Romans, titled Future Glory. These passages are a dream to talk about in such a time as this. They talk about not being afraid, about living not for our flesh today, but for our future glory. But the challenge for us today will be how we put into practice the clear direction that's been given. From hearing the word to applying it, living it, breathing it. For as we know, Jesus is the word. Our Bible is living. Our Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Jesus is our word and the word. So, as we talk through these two passages, I pray the calling they have on your life today, now, is made known to you in such a clear way as to be undeniably from our Lord and a demonstration of his faithfulness to us. Matthew. Now, full disclosure, I am no biblical scholar, but with God's blessing, these are the key messages I take from this passage about Jesus's faithfulness. Um, so I'm going to go through the passage and I'm going to call out what I feel are the key messages about Jesus's faithfulness. Um, and I guess my disclaimer is, is that um, I come at this just, just as an open and honest reader. Um, so uh, be kind to me, but also um, hear what they say about you um, and about the current situation that you're in. The first, don't be afraid of anything. You know, in Matthew it says, don't be afraid. Um, and to me that says, don't be afraid of, of systems, of people, of situations, of decisions, of anything. You are in the hands of God in the same way as a sparrow. It is only him who we need to fear. Is that the balance in your life? Is that the balance in my life? Am I afraid when I don't need to be afraid? Two, let's be public with our faith. Let's enjoy the promise that whoever acknowledges Jesus before men will also be acknowledged, acknowledged by Jesus before our Father in heaven. I used to work for the Salvation Army, a Christian church, and uh, what a gift um, that was and, and one I hope I didn't take for granted to be encouraged to express my faith in my working and personal life uh, now it's harder to express my faith at work but certainly not impossible as disciples we must be faithful to God's request to speak about him and his presence in our lives number three uh, and this is potentially the most dramatic challenge to us uh, don't suppose that I have come to have peace. Uh, don't suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Are we shaken up? Are we missing our peace? Are we missing our comfort? Are we longing for what made us calm? Are we thinking of simpler times? Is this time we are in actually a sword for our lives? Is it helping us to realise that God wanted us to be on fire? Gosh, what a challenge. And one that perhaps deserves a bit more time than a single bullet within a list. 
have we been yearning for a peace that God didn't want us to have? Number four. And Jesus has promised to us, whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We have heard these words before probably many times throughout our lives, but they are as true today as when we first heard them. Christ is faithful. Every day, every day, I need to give up my life. Our commitments are not absolute rocks. They waver either through time or circumstance. Has your commitment wavered? Do we remember commitments that we made uh, in, in baptisms, in communions? Is there an opportunity today to lose our life for Jesus' sake all over again? Are we ready to receive that reward? I'm going to move on to Romans now. Um, so we've had four points on Christ's faithfulness from Matthew 10 and now three from Romans. Seven in total. Uh, but again my, again, my hope is that one of these really speaks into where you are right now. Just one. So point five from Romans about Christ's faithfulness. And this is about suffering. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be, will be revealed in us. Wow. Do we believe in that? Do we reassure ourselves with that? I feel God speaking to me and reassuring me that I will look back at this time and marvel at how I got through it. Today I am holding on to the promise of future flour, of future glory, because without it my days are much harder. Number six, prayer. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. I love this passage. Um, and so relevant when it seems like so much is damaged. Where can we start? What paltry prayer can we offer up? How wonderful to learn that Jesus, through his Spirit, intercedes for us. Last week I had the privilege of doing prayers. The joy of praising God amongst the darkness. The freedom and the sense of liberation to give everything over. Christ's faithfulness to us to pray for us. To find the words that we cannot reach. Seven. Finally, Christ's faithfulness in one passage. And we know in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Are there collective thanks that we need to offer up today, now? With this passage in mind, thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. We are not afraid. Thank you. We can acknowledge you publicly. Thank you. We have a sword Thank you. We give our lives to you again. Thank you. We have future glory. Thank you. We have you praying for us. Thank you. You are working for our good. Thank you. And so, be glorified. You have been called by God and he is faithful. And so, friends, be glorified. Friends, you have been called by God and he is faithful. Thank you. Amen.